To put our gospel into context this morning, when a scribe asks Jesus which commandment is first of all, Jesus answers that love of God and love of neighbor are interconnected and define them as the heart of the kingdom of God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard Jesus and the Sadducees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that... No one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Okay. I'd like to start today's sermon with an image. We're actually going to put that image back up that had the lyrics of the children's sermon song on it. Did you notice the item that was to the left of those lyrics? Has anybody seen one of these before? This is called a mezuzah. A mezuzah. This is a special item that our Jewish siblings in the faith will affix to the threshold of their doorpost to remind them of one of the most important pieces of the Hebrew scriptures. The Shema. Now, the Shema is actually verses 4 and 5 in our first reading from Deuteronomy. We heard them. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. So the mezuzah actually has these words written on a piece of parchment rolled up inside of that capsule, and then they put that on the doorpost of their door to remind them as they go out and as they come in that they are to follow this Shema command to love God. And they put this on the doorpost of the door to follow the command, the biblical command, that comes in those verses 6 through 9. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So Jesus would have likely had one of these on his doorposts. He would have recited these words of scripture. He would have written these words on his heart and talked about them with his disciples and taught them to his, um, the people that were following him in the synagogue and surrounding community. In our gospel lesson today, we hear Jesus expand on this teaching by linking this important command of God to another important command of loving neighbor. In fact, Jesus goes almost so far as to say that they are inseparable from one another, as if he's saying these two laws fulfill one another and inform one another and actually can't be understood apart from one another. The point of the Shema is for God's people to love God totally with their whole selves, and Jesus then takes that further and says, This is how you do that. The way that we love God is by loving our neighbors. Or in other words, we love the God we cannot see by loving our neighbors that we can see. And this love that Jesus is talking about is very different than just feeling affection for someone. It goes a lot deeper than that. 
It's the kind of love that God shows to us. It's a sacrificial kind of love, a love that generously gives of oneself to benefit others. Christ shows us the deepest revelation of this love with his life, death, and resurrection. On the cross, God pours out God's self to us in Christ, and in doing so, redeems the world. It is the ultimate display of love. A love that puts its body on the line so others may live. A love that is shown through action by pouring oneself out for the sake of others. A love that accepts us just as we are, loving us unconditionally, but not leaving us there. Helping us to become the greatest, fullest potential of who we are as children of God. A love that somehow, some way, always brings forth new life and new beginnings out of situations of dead ends and brokenness. A love that knows the number of hairs on our heads and names us beloved, every single one of us. After all, it's St. Augustine who first said, God loves each one of us as if there is only one of us to love. And this is how God calls us to love too, across the dinner table and also across the globe. As soon as we cross that threshold of our front door and enter into the world. As Christians, however, we do not have that mezuzah on our doorpost to remind us of this command. Instead, each of us carry that indelible mark on our forehead from our baptisms when we were marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. When we were named and claimed as a member of the body of Christ, when we become the hands and the feet and the voices of Christ in the world, when we say yes, to living out loud God's love every day. And we always have opportunities to do this. There's a variety of ways to share God's love. One of them is advocacy, working for justice, advocating on behalf of those who are oppressed, practicing a public faith in a public sphere. The well-known quote from Cornell West, I think, is applicable here. Justice is what love looks like in public. There's a whole ELCA department devoted to advocacy. Lots of resources for how to go about gospel-centered advocacy, which is different than um, partisan lobbying. It's about making the common good a reality and working for it. Similar to that, of course, is the many ministries that are available to help those who are hungry or those who are finding homes. Partners like Meals on Wheels, Trials for Hope, Lutheran Metropolitan Ministry, a reminder that we continue that matching campaign one-to-one. Part of Marilyn's offering for her ordination this afternoon is going to go towards that Breaking New Ground campaign. We can give up to $30,000 towards families who are transitioning out of homelessness. That is a way we can love God by loving others. Being a place of radical welcome is a way that we can love God by loving others. I got an email just this past week from the Synod office that Northeastern Ohio is expected to receive 800 Afghan refugees and their families in the coming months. And they kind of said in that email, okay, churches, mobilize yourselves, prepare yourselves. We're going to need your help for welcoming these people who need a home and their children. Also, where we put our bodies is a way that we love God by loving others. When we show up, we express God's love whether that's showing up to cheer on our kids in their activities or showing up to support a friend as they undergo treatment or surgery or showing up to someone who has lost a loved one, showing up to an ordination. When we show up, we also are loving God by loving others. The whole point of the Shema from Deuteronomy and our gospel from Mark is that we are called to love God totally with our whole selves, our whole beings, everything we have, with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength, 
with all our energy and all our enthusiasm and all our creativity and all our agency and all our financial ability and all our generosity. Because how we use our financial resources entrusted to us by God is also a way that we practice loving God. It's like Matthew tells us, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The treasure comes first. Where it already is shows a reflection of our values and makes a statement about what and who we love. We also can use our finances as a way to love God by loving others. It can be a huge tool for us to do that. Some of you know that prior to living in Cleveland, Trey and I lived in a farming community in rural Indiana. And one of the highlights of the year was attending the 4-H fair, where the youth of the church and the youth of the whole community would show their animals. And then the community would gather together for an auction as those animals went to market. The story that I'm about to share didn't come from Carroll County, Indiana, but it could have. It actually comes from Madison County, Ohio. Katie Fisher, who was 17 years old at the time, entered the Madison County, Ohio Junior Livestock Sale hoping the lamb that she had raised would sell for a good price. For months, Katie had been battling cancer. She had endured hospital stays and treatments. Before the lamb went on the block, the auctioneer told the audience about Katie's journey with cancer, hoping that his introduction would push the price per pound above the average of $2. Well, it did, and then some, because the land sold for 11 and a half per pound. Then the buyer in the crowd decided, I'm going to give it back, and suggested that the auctioneer sell it again. And it started a chain reaction. Families bought the lamb and gave it back. Businesses bought the lamb and gave it back. And Katie's mother said, this is the, the first sale was the only one that I remembered because after that, I was crying too hard. They ended up selling the lamb 36 times and raising $16,000 for Katie and her family. This is the power of using our financial resources to love God by loving others. It's a love that is so deep, it's like receiving a hug from a relative who squeezes you a little bit too tight. Anybody felt those hugs before? And even after they let go of you, you still kind of feel the embrace afterwards. That's what we're called to do as the church to love the world with God's love, with God's embrace, so that even after we let go, those people, those creatures, that world continues to feel the embrace of God. When we support the mission of the church, we are supporting God's mission to love. Because that's what the church is called to do, because the church isn't a building. The church is a people the body of Christ, the hands and feet and voices of God in the flesh, redeeming and healing and loving God's world back onto its feet. And we may not have a mezuzah to remind us of this, but we do have each other. We have that indelible mark of our baptism on our foreheads. And after today in worship, if you're here in person, you'll have a little heart to take home and remind you at home as well in your pocket, in your wallet, in the change of your car, a visual reminder of how we are called to love God by loving others, with our whole selves, including with our heartfelt generosity. Amen. <laughs>